Today on your ATV News, horses in Cache Valley are getting sick. Find out why and what you can do to protect them. Utah State University is pioneering a new way to work on your degree. We'll tell you what makes it different and how you can do it. What started out as a way for students to interact privately online might be causing big problems for Utah State. We'll tell you why. In sports, current Aggies shine, but a future Aggie brings down the house. Blue skies, snow is melting, and green grass. But how long will it all last? I'll have your ATV weather coming up. All that and much more coming up right now on your ATV News. Welcome to ATV News, I'm Courtney Robinson. And I'm Emily Landine. You may have heard about a recent outbreak among horses in Cache Valley. ATV's Katrina Warburton is live outside with more information. Katrina? Hey guys, it's called Equine Herpes Virus 1, or EHV1, and it spreads pretty rapidly among horses, and not in a way that you might think. I was able to talk to some veterinarians about this, and they, um, told me some facts about this contagious virus and what horse owners can do to prevent it. <laughs> These horses <laughs> These horses are, well, healthy as a horse, but there are some in Cache Valley that aren't so lucky. The equine herpes virus 1 is the one that's causing the disease and it's a neurological variant because of a lack of coordination or inability to to stand. Um, it also can cause abortion in pregnant mares or respiratory disease which it causes more commonly than the neurological form. Sounds good. Dr. Hess, a state veterinarian, was able to talk about the numbers of horses in Cache Valley that have the disease. Uh, currently we have uh, eight uh, cases that we're working at. But how do the horses get the disease? When the transmission occurs, it's between nose-to-nose uh, uh, -nose contact. It's sharing uh, saliva or it's sharing uh, other mucus uh, secretions with, between horses. We often see a correlation between tack or uh, halters and brushes and blankets and even a trailer that a horse is uh, trailered in. Horses that have the disease have to be secluded from the others so that it doesn't spread. One way to tell if a horse has a disease is if it's just not acting itself. Knowing your horse and knowing what normal is for your horse and then if there are abnormal normal, um, signs that you're seeing, um, then talk with a veterinarian and see what they think. Um, a common thing is to keep a record of temperature, a daily temperature, and seeing the changes um, that may come um, when the horse is positive for EHV. Some of the veterinarians that I spoke with believe that the, um, the, sp the spread could have originally come from the Cache Valley fairgrounds, but we're not sure exactly where it came from, and they're working really hard to stop the outbreak and maybe find out exactly where it started. Back to you guys. Thanks, Katrina. To find out more about the disease, you can go to USU's veterinary webpage fact sheet about EVH1. You can also find the link on our brand new website, aggietvnews.com. The winner of this year's student government elections were announced Thursday on the campus of Utah State. People gathered in the TSE lounge to find out if the candidates they voted for would represent them this following year. Current ASUSU officers announced who would be taking their place in school government as the crowd cheered and the winners went to be recognized. Some of the newly elected officers included Kevin Meekham for service vice president, Thomas Rogers for programming vice president, and Emily Esplin as executive vice president. The 2013-2014 ASUSU president, Doug Fiafia. I'm so happy. I'd like to thank all the people who helped and all those those Aggies who, who voted. Um, but I, I'm just happy to, to represent the students next year. The newly elected officers will officially take office during the 2013-2014 school year. 
What if you could start and finish a class in less than two months? Well, if you've got a computer, now it's possible. I talked to the people responsible for this new system. USU students are taking advantage of online courses more and more. Last semester I did 15 credits online and this semester I'm doing 9 credits online. And now USU has found another way to help. USU's new program called the Flexible Online Learning Program will allow students to take some online classes in a mere four to seven weeks. Having the opportunity to take shorter courses in a more condensed time frame allows them to take care of that major life event that they have, but meanwhile continue on with their education experience and meet their goals. It also allows them to start classes anytime they want. We have a number of students who, who would love, for example, to start, uh, but they aren't ready to start when the traditional semester starts. So students get through more classes faster. Well, that's really nice because it's so flexible to your schedule. But do you really get as much doing your whole class online? as you do in the hours spent here in a classroom? The content won't change, the curriculum won't change. What will change will be the pace at which the student and the faculty member works through the course. Students believe this is great too. They say these courses should be specifically for students who need to get credits done fast. That's the reason why you take online classes because of time and money. So they can get through school and onto their careers. We are hoping that by providing more um, options and greater flexibility for students here at Utah State University uh, that they have more opportunity to meet their education goals. The flexible online learning program will begin this summer with just a few classes but the university plans to add more in the fall. You might have noticed the dust being kicked up from construction on Main Street. ATV's Tamara Bradley went to find out what new store is being built and why you might be shopping for your sports equipment somewhere different next spring. The property on 10th North and Main Street is under construction as Al Sporting Goods plans to make the move to a bigger area in spring 2014. When we built this building in 1997, we immediately found out that we needed additional retail space. We feel it's a better location. You've got 10th North that goes all the way up to the university. You're on Main Street. You're in the heart of, of the Cache Valley shopping district, if you will. Larson's great-grandfather Al started the store more than 90 years ago. We've been in business since 1921. The community knows us. We're Cache Valley sporting goods store and we feel we have a very strong return customer business. The move downtown will mean a larger sales floor, bigger departments, and even create more jobs for the people in Logan. Our current store is about 30,000 square feet. Our new building will be about 60,000 square feet. Every department will at least double. We'll need more retail sales associates. We're gonna need more office staff. We're gonna need people in our shipping and receiving departments. So there will absolutely be more jobs. Customers come in for everything from basketballs to fishing reels to kayaks. Lots of shoes and stuff for hunting. Deer and elk. We buy reloading stuff from here to reload all our shells. We're going to put a lot of emphasis in our cycling department. It'll be a cycling summit shop, a much expanded assortment. It's going to be an exciting addition to Cache Valley. Tamara Bradley, ATV News. Al's management plan is to make the new store more of a destination than the old one, with attractions including a 10-lane indoor gun range. Demolition construction on the site for the new store is set to begin in May. When we come back, a group of students at USU are hoping to take their talents on the road. Find out where they're going and why you might be seeing them on TV. And if you have to receive medical treatment, you might just want to stick around and have it done in Cache Valley. We'll tell you why. Welcome back to ATV News. One of the places where you receive medical care in Cache Valley has something to brag about, and it could mean good things for you. Logan Regional Hospital is one of the top 100 hospitals in the nation, according to a recent study. Logan Regional received the ranking from the TrueVen Health Analytics and was ranked as a top medium-sized community hospital. TrueVen uses objective research and independent public data to rank hospitals based on their patient care, operational efficiency, and financial stability. Logan Regional Communications Director Troy Oldham attributes the ranking to the hard working of the hospital staff. 
You know, this ward really recognizes the caregivers here at our hospital, the physicians, the staff, uh, the, the nurses, everyone involved in making a hospital work. This is really their award um, because it's not just for one area. It actually goes from the clinical side to delivery of service to even how we, um, how we watch our, our expenses. Logan Regional is one of the top five hospitals listed in the ranking, joining McKay D Hospital and Ogden Regional Medical Center, Lakeview Hospital in Bountiful, and Alta View Hospitals in Sandy. If you had the chance to be on national television, would you take advantage of it? Well, the USU dance companies might have that very opportunity, and as our Lee Kubik found out, they're hoping to get their moment in the national spotlight. The USU dance companies have been preparing since winter break for what could be their most important audition. America's Got Talent reached out to the teams after seeing their videos on YouTube. All right, all right. So I might not know how to dance, but they definitely can. With so much on the line, the dance company presidency expects some of the younger dancers to be nervous. A lot of our dancers are nervous. Some of the older ones, myself and, and a couple of the other presidency members, we're not as nervous. We've, we've had many opportunities within our dance career, so the way we see this is like uh, adding another, uh, another thing to the list. So I'm going in pretty confident, uh, but I know definitely a few of our dancers are pretty nervous. The dance teams are relatively new, with the oldest being created six years ago but Kaylee Nye thinks the teams are ready. We've been doing this for, for a while now, and for them to pick this year to, you know, to find the video on YouTube and to ask us to come and try out for America's Got Talent, I mean, I'd like to think that it was the hard work of the past five, six years that have brought us to this point. Nye thinks that the exposure that America's Got Talent provides could lead to a dance program at USU. Lee Kubik, ATV News. The dance companies find out next month if they will advance to the next round of auditions where they would perform for the celebrity judges. A recent study from the American Community Survey shows that women in Utah are less likely than men to receive a degree higher than an associate's. Utah women enroll in college at the national average but are far less likely to graduate. Utah has a 6% gap between men and women over the age of 25 with a bachelor's degree, the largest gap in the nation according to Utah Women and Education Initiative Program. Female enrollment began slipping in 1993 and by 2001 had fallen below the national average. Salt Lake police arrested a man on Monday afternoon when they say he was linked to a murder in Idaho. Police say in they received an anonymous tip that the man was staying at Motel 6 in Salt Lake City. Police searched the man's room before arresting him. And according to charging documents, the suspect abandoned a man with stab wounds in Gooding, Idaho on Sunday. An open house by the Safety Net program is being held today in St. George. The program finds host families for teens who have left their polygamist homes. The program is directed under the Attorney General's office in order to give teens leaving the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints a place to stay. Potential host families have to go through background checks and training before the arrangement can be made. The phrase, if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say anything at all, has taken a whole new meaning for one group on campus. Lauren Brewer is reporting live from the, from the newsroom to tell us why. Lauren? Okay, you may not think that what you say on the internet can come back and haunt you, but it can, especially if what you say might be considered illegal. They kind of sound like conversations I've had with my friends. She is talking about Utah State University Confessions. It is a Facebook page that gives USU students a way to express themselves anonymously. But just all different kinds of uh, confessions going on. I think that's healthy for the student body just to be open rather than passive or closed about certain, you know, whatever, whatever's on people's minds. But what happens if posts are about some person's sex life or harass a student? That's when the university takes notice. People on this site name names. That concerns us, and it should concern the site administrator, because that 
could be considered libelous, and certainly some of it could be considered criminal. That means offensive posts on the page can get the page itself not only in trouble with the university, but also with the law. So does that mean USU Confessions is going to be shut down? Our initial reaction is, to not, is not to shut the site down, it's to talk to the person to see if what they're posting, the parameters they've decided upon themselves for posting stuff on the site. In response to these concerns, the page administrator, who declined to be on camera, says, I have begun to censor content that comes onto the page. He or she hopes this will help because it's social media we can't we can't uh, we can't monitor every single post made about the university or respond to every single post the university said that they're not going to take down the page but they are warning students that use the page to be careful what they post because not everything is protected under the first amendment okay back to you guys in the studio Thanks, Lauren. Similar Facebook groups exist for students at other campuses, including the University of Utah, Brigham Young University, and Weber State. When we come back, ATV's Eric Jungblatt will have your Cache Valley weather report. It's currently 28 degrees and sunny here at Utah State University campus in Logan. This weather, it's sunny, it's cold. What is our spring break weather going to be like? Well, I wish I had some good news for you guys, but this isn't going to last for very long. Let's take a look at our live cam outside. As you can see, we've got some sun. Uh, the snow's starting to melt out there a little bit, and we saw some green grass today. But unfortunately, it's just not going to last. Um, let's take a look at our national weather, uh, our national radar here. There we go. As you can see, we've got a lot of uh, activity around the country in terms of moisture. Um, out here in the Midwest, we've got a very large storm system. Uh, I've got some relatives out there who are probably feeling it right now. Um, we, up here in the Northwest, you can see we uh, have some, uh, we've got some weather com we've got some uh, weather coming in, and uh, that's going to affect us here pretty soon. Otherwise, uh, most of the country is looking clear. Uh, moving on to our uh, next map here. As you can see, we're going to have some snow and some moisture uh, coming in. We uh, Also, that storm that I was talking about in the Midwest is going to be moving on out to the east, so if you're heading out there, uh, prepare yourself because it's going to be pretty cold. Otherwise, uh, looking clear in the middle of the country, um, let's move on to our five-day forecast here. As you can see, uh, on Tuesday, it's going to be uh, it's going to be uh, fairly warm, a uh, high of 43. We're going to have a uh, low of 26 here. Wednesday, a uh, high of 49, a uh, low of uh, 33. Uh, on Thursday, we are going to um, have a high of 38 and uh, a low of 31. And <sighs> Okay, and uh, that's your ATV weather. Uh, so that's, uh, that's your forecast for the spring break. Sorry, I know it's uh, not what you think uh, when it comes to spring break, but it's life. Oh, well, we'll have to go someplace else warm. You know, head out to California or something. Try to get some warm weather in. Need some shorts weather. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up in your ATV sports report, Aggie Gymnastics flipped into the spectrum, but could they beat their rivals from Provo? What's up guys? I've got all of your sports action covered right now. For their second meet in three days, the Aggie Gymnasts took on an in-state rival. Aggie Gymnastics was home last night as they faced off against BYU in the spectrum. The Aggies started the night off on vault. Paige Jones had a top performance with a 9.85 and freshman Michelle Yatsakupichi had a career best of 9.725. But top performances and career highs were not enough for the Aggies to pull ahead. Down two points moving into the final event, the Aggies struggled on their floor rotation. They started off strong, but they could not finish the night. Got uh, six of our 12 kids, you know, that are scholarship right now sitting out. So we're, you know, we're, we're pretty happy that we've got the depth that we've got this year. But you can see there's the inconsistency.
The Aggies will be back in the Spectrum for their final home meet on March 15th against Boise State. The 4A State High School Championships were this weekend and they were full of thrills. Aggie fans, take a look at this. Jalen Moore, a Skyview High School senior, he's committed to USU. This was in overtime of the semifinal game against Bountiful. Moore puts up a half-court shot and it's good as time expires to send Skyview to the state championships against none other than Valley rival Mountain Crest. The shot was featured on ESPN Sports Center's Top 10. Saturday in Ogden, the rivals went head-to-head -to, -head to determine the top team in Utah. The two were tied in the fourth when Skyview managed to pull ahead with a 6-0 run to win 50 to 56 to 50. Moore led the Bobcats with 16 points and was named MVP of the 4A tournament. The USU women's basketball team entered Thursday night with a chance at two firsts in school history. The Aggies' first home win against La Tech and the first season sweep of the Lady Texters. The game started off quickly out of the gate with this layup from Jennifer Schlott, who led the team with 19 points. In the game, Schlott then dishes, dishes one of her four assists as Johnson finishes the, with the layup. Christensen hits a fadeaway three off the inbound pass, and the Aggies took a lead into the half. La Tech made a comeback in the second half, but the Aggies held on. This reverse layup by Johnson and a breakaway layup by Christensen to win 70-56. Just builds momentum coming in for conference. I mean, we have one game left at home, three games left in season, so it just builds the momentum, which is great. The problem we have right now is that we're winning and feel like we can play better, and that's a good problem to have at this time of the year. After facing La Tech, the Aggies then turned their attention to UT Arlington as they honored their seniors on senior night. The Aggie senior shined as Christensen records an assist here on Furtado's three and Va'alulu's layup shown here. Christensen had a game high of 24 points, including this rebound putback layup and just one of her four three-pointers in her final home game. Senior Jenna Johnson finished the game with 17 points, two coming from this layup. After the 81-57 victory, the seniors were honored. Senior Pule Furtado, as well as Jenna Johnson, Bonna Jock, and Devin Christensen, who leads the Aggies with the school's all-time career points record. The past four years, I've lived in the spectrum night and day, always coming in and, you know, just getting extra workouts, practices, ice baths, it doesn't matter what. The spectrum has been basically my home. So the Aggies, they finished off their entire season not losing once at home. It's a pretty impressive feat. That's really no. impressive. Head to the WAC tournament next week. So we'll they had a great season. Yeah, they definitely did. Hopefully they will have a tournament. Yep. Thanks, Meredith. Still to come on ATV News. Find out how one campus group went beyond a basic bake sale when they had to raise some funds. You may have heard about bake sales for fundraisers, but what about a Native American powwow? Well, one student club at Utah State University held their 40th annual fundraising powwow gathering this past weekend, and ATV's Marie Tietza was there. These are the sights and sounds of the 40th annual powwow hosted by Utah State University's Native American Student Council. It's taken like months and months of planning. People came here, it started at 12, ground entry, and people were here since like 8 and like working. And I know like cleanup takes, right after it ends, the powwow, it takes up until like 2 in the morning to clean up all the benches and like the chairs and stuff. Families like Lanes travel hours to dance in these powwows with handmade outfits that have been passed down from generation to generation. Do the fancy dance. It's like one of the uh, newest dances. I've been growing up dancing this dance. Mostly my family travels all over, so we pretty much um, we're pretty much born into it. 
But it isn't just about the dancing and the costumes for Lane. He wants people to learn about his native culture. Some people think differently be uh, of us because they just think that we like attack people, but we just like coming together as like family, and we come together and we do these celebrations. People can come to this powwow to learn about authentic dancing, authentic dress, and authentic food. The powwow ended with a line of dancers, a line for food, and a closing prayer. Marie Tietze, ATV News. The powwow at USU is the second largest event held at the university after the how and cost about $10,000 to put on. This week marks the 125th anniversary of Utah State University and next time on Cash Rendezvous, we'll celebrate everything that makes Utah State great. We leave you today with the sights and sounds of the Native American powwow. See you on Thursday.